Hi, my name is Mike Bauer. I'm a research scientist at NVIDIA Research. Uh, and today I'll be talking to you today about a project that I've been working on called Legate NumPy, uh, which is all about delivering accelerated and distributed array computing to the masses. Uh, so first, this is SciPy. Uh, I probably don't need this slide, uh, but I'll do it anyway, uh, which is a brief overview of NumPy. Uh, NumPy is a very popular uh, Python package for doing mostly dense uh, array computing. Uh, there's a little example of NumPy over here on the right-hand side. There's a conjugate gradient solver. And of course, if you looked up the defini textbook definition of, of a conjugate gradient solver, it would look pretty much exactly like this, uh, which is why NumPy is so successful and, and is, in, is, in, is used by so many people. It's very easy to write, uh, very easy to understand uh, and maintain, and, and you get great performance uh, with it too, uh, running on CPUs. Uh, importantly, NumPy provides a, a really great uh, building block for many other Python packages. Uh, so things like scikit-learn and PyTorch are both built on top of, of NumPy. So it's sort of a fundamental building block uh, for a lot, of, a lot of other Python libraries. And as a result, people have been trying to accelerate it uh, to get to run on GPUs. Um, and there have been many examples of drop-in replacements for, for NumPy uh, for GPUs. Uh, and by drop-in replacement, what I mean is you change this one import statement at the top, uh, and your code will run as is uh, using GPUs. So examples of this are Kupai, uh, Jax, and Borium. And of course, you know, we sort of asked ourselves in NVIDIA, you know, what would it, wouldn't it be great if, you know, instead of just running on one GPU, uh, you could actually run this on uh, N GPUs, where N is anywhere from 1 to 27,648, uh, which is the number of GPUs in the Summit uh, supercomputer, which a lot of our, our customers actually use. So the goal of Wigate NumPy is to make it possible for people to run NumPy code on any number of GPUs at any scale of machine uh, uh, that they possibly need to target uh, for their workloads. Uh, and importantly, you know, just like all the other drop-in replacements, we want to maintain that this is a, a pure drop-in replacement that only requires you to change this one import statement uh, in order to use it. And after you do that, uh, we want your same code to be able to run on everything. And by everything, we mean you know, your single, de single GPU and your desktop machine, uh, to 16 GPUs and a DGX2, uh, uh, to potentially hundreds of GPUs and a DGX SuperPod, up to, say, the 27,000 GPUs in the Summit uh, supercomputer. And we really do think it has to be this simple. You know, first off, there are a lot of users out there who, who you know, they like the simplicity of NumPy, but really they, they, they just don't have the computer science expertise to write uh, MPI and CUDA code to be able to target uh, these class of machines by hand. And second, you know, it has to be a drop-in replacement, right? If you don't have a pure drop-in replacement that maintains the NumPy API uh, exactly, uh, then you destroy all the composability and interoperability with existing software that's built on top of NumPy. And so we want to make sure that we maintain that uh, and keep the API exactly identical to what, what NumPy uh, has today. Uh, so here's, let's do a little example of uh, Legate NumPy working in practice. Uh, this is about the smallest example that I can fit in a slide. Uh, so this is a very simple Jacobi solver, uh, doing an iterative solve of a, of a matrix um, uh, written in, in NumPy. Uh, and what we're plotting here is sort of throughput, a uh, number of iterations per second uh, for Legate NumPy and, you know, for GPUs in green and on CPU only uh, in red, compared against, you know, two sort of standard uh, implementations of NumPy. There's the canonical one of NumPy in purple, running on either one or two CPU 20-core sockets, or Kupai running on a, on a single GPU. And what you see is that, you know, we NumPy has, has comparable performance to, to NumPy and Kupai on, on CPUs and GPUs respectively, uh, but then it also automatically scales out uh, to as many uh, uh, sockets as, as you want to target. And we're doing weak scaling here. Uh, so what that means is that your, your uh, matrices are getting bigger uh, as we're scaling out. Uh, so we have a 256 big, bigger uh, matrix going from 1.5 gigabytes to 400 gigabytes all the way at the right. What you see is, you know, it's helpful to visualize where the GPUs are here, right? There's one GPU all the way on the left. You get the four GPUs in DGX station, eight GPUs in DGX box. Uh, we get the 16 sockets. That's where we cross into multiple nodes. Uh, those are two DGX boxes. And by the time we get the right here, we're out in the realm of DGX SuperPod. Uh, running on 32 nodes with 8 GPUs per node. And so, you know, you might be asking yourself, well, how do we make all this possible? Uh, you know, what is the sort of underlying technology that makes Legate NumPy work? And so what you're going to see is that we're going to be building on top of a, of a uh, sort of a popular uh, HPC runtime system that I've also been working on prior to Legate NumPy uh, called Legion. And what we're going to see is that Legate NumPy is going to build a lot on Legion. I'm going to give you a brief overview of Legion here in one slide, uh, and then you'll get a better feel for it throughout the talk as I talk about how Legate NumPy uses uh, Legion throughout the rest of the, the talk. So Legion is an HPC runtime system written entirely in C++ and CUDA. Uh, it scales to very large machines, thousands of GPUs like on the Summit supercomputer. Most of our customers today are computational scientists doing very large scale uh, numerical simulations. Uh, this is a, a combustion simulation that was done for a Gordon Bell submission uh, a few years ago. And our performance is great. 
uh, you know, effectively lead gate number or lead gate scales out to to huge numbers of GPUs. This is running on eight thousand GPUs compared to some MPI plus OpenACC hand tuned code that had been developed, uh, you know, for over a number of years. And lead gate is able to both to outperform that in peak performance as well as you can see that our scalability is better in the sense that our, our gap between MPI and OpenACC grows as we get out th- out to more and more thousands of GPUs. So by the time we're out at eight thousand GPUs, we're about three x faster uh, on this particular application. So what you take away from this is that you know Legion has a, a pedigree of, of being a very high performance runtime system and cable scaling to just huge numbers of GPUs that you potentially want to target. But really, what's going to allow us to do is to build Legion NumPy. So today, our traditional users write directly to the Legion runtime uh, API and program model and learn on all the classes and machines that we care about. But really, what Legion NumPy is about is is sort of bridging the gap between sort of a more sophisticated HPC programming model and programming system uh, like Legion. Uh, and making it available to people who are more HPC productivity users and data scientists who don't necessarily have the expertise to, to leverage Legion by uh, directly. So Legion NumPy is going to help help bridge this gap. Uh, it's going to do this uh, in, uh, by having you know sort of a thin layer of a Legate core, which I'll be talking about uh, later in this talk. And you know our our goal while we're doing this for Legate NumPy is to support not just NumPy but also other Legate libraries, and I'll talk about this more more later. So you know using Legate NumPy is actually very easy. All you have to do is change that one import statement. Uh, so the rest of this talk is really going to focus on the design and implementation of Legate itself uh, and Legate NumPy and how it's implemented on top of Legion. You know, for other people who want to potentially build other Legate libraries uh, in a similar architecture to how Legate NumPy works. So Legate NumPy is going to be built on three different components. Uh, there's going to be a thing that translates your NumPy code uh, into a Legion uh, C, Legion C API. Uh, there's going to be some fast implementations of, of tasks. Uh, and there's going to be Legate mappers that help decide how to map all this uh, onto onto a particular target machine. And all this is going to go down through the Legion uh, task-based runtime system and run on uh, on pretty much any kind of machine that you want to target. So let's actually dive into this architecture a little bit more. So when you're running a NumPy program uh, with Legate NumPy, how is it actually going to get translated to Legion? What's going to happen is, you know, as you encounter NumPy API calls, such as, like, say, an argument, uh, what you're going to turn around and do is you're going to turn around and launch off one or more tasks into the Legion runtime system. Legion is a task-based runtime system, so you know that's how you run computation as the tasks. And each one of your API calls can translate into one or more task launches to actually perform each of those computations. Right? And some of the simpler ones only need one task, but some of the more complicated ones uh, may require, require multiple tasks. We'll have fast implementations of those tasks written in C++, CUDA, and OpenMP. Uh, so you get you know really high performance uh, running at, at the speed of light uh, on a particular machine that you're running on, whether you have GPUs or not. Uh, and then we're going to have a Legate NumPy mapper, which is going to make decisions about where those tasks are going to run and where data is going to be placed and so forth. And that's what's going to allow us to sort of have our code be portable across lots of different scales of machines. All this gets fed into the Legion uh, runtime system, which then you know, gives us our execution on, on our target hardware. So let's dive in even to some more details here. Uh, so I talked a little about tasks. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how we deal with ND arrays. So ND arrays map into Legion's data model. Uh, Legion has a data frame-like uh, data model, meaning we have these things called logical regions, which are effectively data frames. Uh, they have an index space of rows uh, and field spaces of columns uh, that you can name. And each one of our ND arrays in NumPy is going to be a field in one of these uh, logical regions uh, uh, to describe the actual representation of data. Importantly, Legion's logical regions do not incur uh, memory allocations. They are sort of abstract logical descriptions of data and how it's uh, broken up uh, without meaning to describe necessarily how it's placed or laid out in the memory. That's sort of the job of the mapper, and we'll be talking about that in more detail later. Uh, when you launch tasks in Legion, uh, such as your program here, each one of those tasks need to specify you know, which regions and subregions they're going to access as part of, of their execution. And what that allows Legion to do is to dynamically construct a dependence graph uh, for actually uh, run, uh, figuring out how dependencies exist between these different tasks. And importantly, when we actually go to map uh, these tasks onto actual hardware, you know, picking which, which tasks run on CPUs and GPUs across the machine, that allows us to potentially reorder tasks, you know, as long as we abide by the sequential semantics of the original program. And importantly, you know, effectively the mapper can automatically figure out uh, how to do that and then automatically insert copies, and then the runtime will automatically insert copies to maintain the coherence of data for you. You don't need to do that yourself. The Legion runtime will actually handle, handle that for you. So I want to say a little bit more about how we do this dependence analysis, because it's really a crucial piece of, of how Legion works and how Legate NumPy is able to take advantage of some of the, the productivity features that Legion affords. Uh, so as your NumPy program is running along, kicking off tasks asynchronously, 
right? It's sort of running ahead of where your actual execution is taking place. It's just launching tasks. And then Legion is coming in and filling out in the dependencies, you know, for these tasks based on the, the names of the regions and fields that they're actually using. And what this means is that we have sort of several wavefronts of, of execution going on here. So first, we have a construction wavefront. This is where your NumPy program is actually running ahead, uh, kicking off tasks. We have an analysis wavefront uh, corresponding to where Legion is actually performing uh, its dependence analysis to actually analyze uh, the tasks and the dependencies. We have an execution wavefront where tasks are actually executing on the hardware to actually perform their computation. And of course, this gap between the execution wavefront and the analysis wavefront uh, is where we actually have room for data movement, right? And we actually hide and overlap the latency of, of data movement with you know, execution by other tasks. And finally, we have a destruction wavefront. We're actually cleaning up the graph after tasks are being done and executed, and we know that they're not going to have to roll back and recommit for any, any resilience reasons. And the important thing that this is is that this model is not neither eager nor lazy, uh, but instead we call it deferred. And what that means is that, effectively, we're running ahead, but we're not sort of waiting for the whole graph to be built like you would have in a lazy evaluation. Nor are we waiting you know, for every task to finish before we go and run the next task. It's different than how things like PyTorch and TensorFlow work, where they have you know, either an eager mode where they're running, running a computation and then waiting for it to finish, or they have a lazy mode where they're building up a whole graph of your whole program so that they can optimize it and then execute it. Uh, so we're sort of in the middle ground. And this gives us some important, some important advantages, uh, especially for NumPy, which is that you know, we can construct this graph on the fly, and that allows us to deal with uh, arbitrary control flow, uh, which is really important in NumPy programs that you know, have lots of branches and dependent control flow that may depend on data values and so forth. Uh, and so we can, we can deal with that much more effectively uh, in this deferred execution model. And secondly, you know, the other value of this is that effectively our graph never gets so big that we can't store it in memory. Uh, it actually, you know, it's, it's, there's a sliding window here of, of how big this graph is. And it's, you know, it's sized, you know, at, by the runtime system to adapt to your program. Uh, what that means is that we never actually run out of memory trying to represent this, this graph whenever we're legally building up something that gets so huge that we can't optimize it uh, and schedule it. So I've talked a lot about tasks, uh, but I want to talk about data in, in particular, because that's really where, where the crux of you know, distributed execution actually happens, is how you partition and distribute your data across you know, a distributed machine. Uh, so we're going to talk about how ND arrays map in the Legion, and then we'll talk about partitioning uh, and how those, those, those uh, ND arrays are partitioned across the machine. So first, let's figure out how we make ND arrays uh, for NumPy uh, in Legion. So each one of our ND arrays uh, in NumPy has been a map to a field of a Legion logical region. Uh, we can dynamically create logical regions and dynamically allocate fields on those logical regions uh, on the fly in Legion. And so what that allows us to do is to create you know, logical regions that have different shapes, corresponding to the shapes of our NumPy arrays uh, that are being made on demand. And then we can allocate fields you know, as we need to make new ND arrays as part of our NumPy execution. And finally, once fields are, are garbage collected uh, and we know that there are no more outstanding tasks using them, then we're going to be able to recycle them. So let's do a little example. Uh, coming back to our Jacobi solver here from, from earlier in the talk, uh, let's say we are going to do this uh, uh, random call here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to make uh, a logical region to represent uh, this shape, uh, so this n by n uh, matrix. Uh, so we create a region with an index base that's n by n, and then we allocate a field in that uh, to represent the, the A matrix, call that AIJ. Uh, we get to our next line, we need to make another uh, logical region here because it's a different shape than the previous one. This is just an ND, or a one dimensional ND, uh, or N vector of size N. Uh, so we create a logical region for that. And then we allocate you know, a, another field in that region for the B vector. And we go down the line, you know, each one of these statements will allocate a new field. You know, again, we're reusing shapes here because you know, each of these vectors has the same shape uh, of, that, of that logical region with, that's just a 1D vector. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we can we get back to our matrix. Again, that's another field in the first uh, logical region. And we get into our loop now, and each one of these iterations will actually create a different field corresponding to a different instance of the x uh, vector for each of the different iterations. And of course, once, you know, some of these, uh, these uh, iterations actually start to finish their execution uh, with our different execution model, then we'll be able to reclaim them and reuse those, those fields as well. So that's how we make logical regions and fields to actually represent the logical data uh, that these ND arrays need uh, for actually uh, computing things inside of inside of region. But of course, you know, just naming ND arrays is not sufficient. If we're actually going to do parallel and distributed execution, we actually need to do some partition. And it turns out partitioning in Legion is going to actually help us solve another problem with NumPy, which is how we deal with things like uh, creating array views uh, corresponding to basic indexing syntax uh, in, in NumPy. Uh, we also support advanced syntax, uh, but I'm not going to have time to, to get into that uh, today. So in order to handle both partitioning across the machine as well as these views, we're going to sit on top of Legion's uh, partitioning system. So Legion has first-class support for, for creating partitions of regions into subregions. 
Uh, and importantly, we support you know the, di the dynamic creation of partitions, as well as the support for creating multiple partitions of each uh, region, as well as you know hierarchically decomposing and creating uh, partitions of subregions and so forth. And we're actually seeing an example of this here with this this this, this code on the left. This code on the left is sort of a toy uh, cartoon stencil example. Um, effectively, we're doing a little stencil computation that's iterating uh, a stencil computation over a grid. And we've done is we've actually made some array views in here to represent, you know, sort of off by one to the left, off by one to the right, off by one to the top, and one to the bottom, uh, the, the north, east, south, west, south, and south uh, of views of this grid array. What we do is we actually show how you represent that partitioning uh, in Legion uh, with by Legion NumPy uh, when we actually uh, execute this program. So first, you know, we make this grid, and that's going to turn into one of those logical regions and one of those fields that we saw from the previous slide. And the first thing, we're, when we hit uh, a statement like this, which is actually going to create a view uh, onto, uh, onto this array, right? what that means is we, we need to make a subregion to represent the subset of data that's represented by that, uh, that center view. And to do this, Legate NumPy creates indexing partitions for views, which are single subregion partitions that name you know, subsets of data that are correspond to application data uh, requested by your NumPy program. So this is sort of the symbol for what we do when we actually do a dynamic uh, creation of a partition in Legion. Um, and we make a single subregion called center, uh, which is actually going to represent you know that subset of data uh, corresponded by that view. Similarly, when we get you know to north, you know we're going to make another partition. This is an example of using creating multiple partitions of the same logical region. Uh, and we have one of these for each one of these statements uh, inside of NumPy. Every one of those will turn into a different indexing partition to name a subregion uh, that we're going to access. And importantly, you know, this is this this allows us to deal with with the particular uh, view the semantics of, of NumPy's basic indexing. And so what that means is that you know effectively in NumPy, if you change one of these values in say the center center subview, that needs to be reflected in the grid uh, array as well. And same thing if you change a value in the grid array, that needs to be reflected in the center sub uh, uh, subview. And you know it turns out that Legion's partitioning semantics exactly implement this identical semantics. And, you know, this just happened to work out uh, coincidentally, but I think, you know, it's, a, it's an example of good design where, you know, both Legion and NumPy had made the same design independently and just sort of happens to map well together. So Legion subregions automatically maintain the semantics of, of NumPy subviews. Now, in addition to partitions created by the application for representing uh, views, Legion also, or Legate NumPy also creates what we call natural partitions for naming how we want to actually break up each of these uh, ND arrays across the machine for however many processors that we're targeting. So we use the same partitioning mechanism to create natural partitions uh, for internal distribution of data across however many processors we're targeting. So whenever we're going to do an operation, we're going to use these natural partitions to help select uh, how to break up the data uh, for doing distributed execution across you know, many processors. And you know, this is an example of hierarchical partition, where you know par creating partitions of subregions and so forth. Uh, and we can make you know these these natural partitions on every view that is created by the application. Uh, the last important part of partitioning is that Legion maintains the coherence of program data across these partitions. So if you run a task that uses, you know, one partition, and you use launch tasks that use a different partition, Legion will guarantee that your reads will see the most recent write, regardless uh, to any one of the indexes in these regions, regardless of which partition you're using. Uh, and this is really, really powerful. It makes it really easy to switch partitions uh, inside of your program, inside of uh, Legate NumPy, and you don't have to worry about maintaining things. Like effectively, you just offload that problem on Legion runtime and just let it deal with it. And that makes it really, really easy to write, you know, code that needs different partitions of data uh, across your distributed system. So last thing I want to talk about is the Legate NumPy mapper, uh, which is how we actually make uh, decisions about where we're going to actually place tasks and data. Legion actually has no heuristics inside of it for making such decisions. Instead, it exposes all of these decisions up through an API, which is called the mapper API. Um, and so what we've done is we've written a custom Legate mapper to make these decisions that has domain-specific knowledge that knows that it's mapping NumPy uh, and actually knows how to map uh, these uh, uh, tasks and data in a way that's, that's effective for, for running NumPy codes and distributed systems. So we're going to talk work through a little example here of sort of one of these uh, GemB computations from, say, our Jacobi solver from earlier in the talk. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how the mapper actually maps, uh, maps both the tasks and the data. So the first thing when we see one of these calls like this that our mapper actually decides to do is whether or not to actually offload onto an agent. You know, in the case where you give us a really tiny uh, matrix uh, and vectors, right, we're probably not going to offload that onto an agent. It's not worth the overhead of the dependence analysis. It's actually faster just to run that straight in standard NumPy or CuPy or something like that. But you know, assuming the array is big enough uh, and the vectors are big enough, then, then we're actually going to offload that onto an agent. So the first thing our mapper asks when we offload this computation to Legion is, is how do we even decide where we're going to place both the data and the tasks? 
And the way that we do this is with a sort of a heuristic, which is we effectively look for what we call the key array argument. And the key array argument is effectively looking for which of these arrays is the biggest, the one that we want to use with its natural partitioning uh, that means that we don't have to move as much data. So you know, each of these, each of these different uh, ND arrays has its own natural partition uh, that we get NumPy maintains, uh, corresponding to how many GPUs or processors we have in our system. Uh, we got four GPUs in this particular case. We have four, uh, four subregions for each of these arrays. And obviously, you can see the, array ma the A matrix is really the big one. right? You don't want to have to move those tiles. It's much cheaper to move, say, pieces of the X and Y vectors than it is to move you know, tiles of this A matrix around. So we're going to use the A matrix as the key array argument uh, for mapping this, this computation. And once we've selected that as the key array argument, what we do is that we then create partitions for the other operations, uh, for the other arguments, to match how we're going to need to the tiling of those uh, of those uh, of that A array ar or A array argument. Um, and so what we do is we make partitions of X and Y corresponding to the tiles of of the A matrix. Right again, this is a, an example of creating sort of a dynamic partition on the fly as we need it uh, for a particular Legion operation. Uh, and then we can, you know, launch tasks to, to do the inner products for each one of these tile operations before we do a reduction. So once we've done this, this partition, the next thing we do is figure out where we're going to run the tasks. So we compute a mapping of how to map uh, each of these uh, uh, tasks onto particular GPUs to do these inner products for each of the tiles. Right, and in particular, Lee NumPy's mapper is actually really smart about interconnect topologies. So it knows about things like NVLink. Uh, and the very complicated uh, hierarchies or, or topologies that exist inside of like the NB link uh, between GPUs and say in a DGX box. Um, and it's, it makes sure we get locality between these things for doing say the inner products. And finally, once we decide where to map the tasks, we figure out where to place all the data for each one of these, uh, each one of these logical regions. And this is where we actually create allocations of memory. Uh, you'll recall that I said that we, logical regions don't create any memory. This is the part where we actually allocate uh, memory for these things this is when we actually map these tasks. And so what we do is we map, you know, copies of the A and X and Y uh, vectors. We can map them either into frame buffer memory or zero copy memory or any other memory that we choose inside the system, as long as it's visible from the processor we've uh, selected to run the task on. Uh, and Legion will automatically issue any copies that are needed to move the, the data up to date uh, for those particular copies that we've selected to, to use. Uh, importantly, we can also choose layouts. So we can choose like array, uh, uh, C order or Fortran order of dimensions and so forth uh, uh, for however we best want to compute these things, depending on how data is laid out in the copy. And the real value of this mapper interface is allows us to decouple translations uh, from you know, the actual application code from how we actually want to map this onto real hardware. And this is how we get both our portability and flexibility of making sure that Legate NumPy can scale you know, everywhere from your single, single GPU in your desktop out to potentially hundreds of thousands of GPUs. So now I want to do sort of a performance comparison so we can benchmark how Legate NumPy performs. Uh, we're going to compare against you know, several different NumPy implementations. So of course, we'll do standard NumPy uh, running on a single node. That'll be in purple. Uh, we'll do that up to two sockets, uh, see if it can get any uh, multi-threaded performance. Uh, we'll also compare against Intel Pi uh, with support for MKL, again, on just a single node. Uh, we'll compare against uh, Legate uh, CPU only uh, in red and Legate CPU plus GPU support uh, in green. And we're also going to have some benchmarks against uh, Dask, uh, both with two different versions of that. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Dask, it's a very popular Python library for parallel and distributed uh, computing. It's used by uh, lots of people, including you know, the NVIDIA Rapids team. And Dask has an array library built on top of it, uh, which is really, really similar to NumPy, uh, with one exception, which is that you sort of have to specify these chunking sizes for how you want to break up your array. And you can either specify these chunk sizes explicitly uh, by picking them, or you can specify sort of this auto uh, string, which will tell Dask to actually try to, to guess good chunk sizes for you. And I'll have two, two different lines in these plots, both auto and tuned, uh, to just represent, you know, auto being uh, letting DAS pick all the chunk sizes for you, uh, and tuned being, you know, effectively uh, a brute force auto tuner that I've written uh, to actually find the best possible chunks for every one of these these DAS programs. I'll say this: these experiments were run uh, about a year ago, uh, which is, you know, when DAS was only supporting CPU only version of DAS uh, DAS has since added support for CuPy, uh, which allows you to actually get some GPU execution for these things. Uh, I have not actually been able to be successful at getting that to actually run correctly. Uh, so if someone from the Dask community would be willing to help me benchmark that, I'd be happy to add uh, some lines for, for GPU performance for Dask with Cupy. Uh, so please reach out to me if, if you're open to doing it. Um, all these plots are going to be log log. Uh, they're run on a cluster of DGX1 v nodes connected with InfiniBan. Uh, and weak scaling, uh, we're going to be plotting weak scaling, uh, which means you know, we want flat lines. Uh, and we're going to be plotting throughput, so higher is going to be better. And we're going to be uh, effectively trying to keep the problem size fixed for a socket. And what that means is that, you know, effectively we're going to have either a socket will either be a 20 core Intel CPU or, you know, a DGX, uh, or, or sorry, a, a, an NVIDIA uh, Volta GPU. 
Uh, and so we're trying to try and keep the problem size fixed per socket, thinking about a 20 core CPU is about the same as, as, as one GPU. So here's our uh, Jacobi solver example from earlier in the talk. Uh, it's effectively got some more lines on the, the slide now, corresponding to the, the DAS lines as well as uh, Intel Pi. Uh, Intel Pi. Uh, and so what you can see is that you know Leadgate NumPy is, is scaling very well, uh, as we saw earlier. Uh, DAS does pretty well. Um, uh, it does definitely gets you some some good scalability. Uh, what you can see is that you know comparing CPUs to CPUs, this is effectively an apples to apples comparison. CPU only execution to CPU only execution, we're about 10x faster uh, than DAS as we scale out uh, across multiple nodes. Uh, we're getting about 100x if you toss in the GPUs, but again, that's not really apples to apples. So so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, and what you can see is there are different uh, interconnect topologies here. Uh, there's NVLink being used uh, up to four GPUs. You know, we have to use, have to use PCIe within a node uh, to get up to eight GPUs. And then you know, once we get past that, we're actually in the realm of multi-node execution where we're dealing with a theta band. Uh, and so you can see our scalability, you know, still has a little bit to work on with the GPUs, uh, where the GPUs are just so fast to ch churning through compute uh, with the GEMV computation that, you know, we start to see communication starting to be exposed. Here's another example. Uh, this is designed to test, you know, sort of how well you can get close to perfect weak scaling uh, for an application that doesn't have any communication at all. Uh, this is Black Shoals, which you know has no communication between any of the the, the options that you're pricing. Uh, DAS actually starts out a little bit faster uh, than we get NumPy on CPUs, and the reason is that they actually do some some aggressive uh, fusion of their tasks, which we're not doing in we get NumPy today, but we could do in the future. Uh, so they get better performance than us on a single node. Uh, but you see, there's sort of an, a sequential bottleneck that starts to be incurred from Dask, uh, from scheduling from a single node, which Legion doesn't have have quite the same problem. And so, you know, our Legate uh, NumPy actually is able to scale out uh, to any number of GPUs uh, without having to incur that sequential scheduling bottleneck uh, from having a single controller node that's that's spanning out or, or spawning off tasks into, into subnodes. Uh, here's an example of logistic regression. Uh, we're doing full gradient descent. Uh, instead of you know stochastic gradient descent, and what that means is we've loaded all of the data set into memory, striped across all of you know the GPUs or CPUs of our system. It's a really difficult parallel reduction here with some very unusually shaped GEMVs that requires an all reduce. Uh, and effectively, you know, you can see Legion NumPy is doing a really great uh, job of doing that on top of Legion. Uh, we get almost perfect weak scaling uh, for our CPUs. Our GPUs still have some some work to do as we scale out. You can see it's sort of tailing off a little bit. We're just still doing very great. Um, you can actually see here where picking chunk sizes in DAS actually matters, uh, where, you know, effectively there's about a 10x difference there in performance between sort of the, the uh, brute force tuned version of the pink line uh, versus the auto size where you're allowing DAS to pick the chunk sizes uh, for you. And of course, in Legate NumPy, you don't have to pick chunks. We do all that for you. Uh, and so, you know, effectively imagine that, you know, Legate NumPy is effectively picking all these chunk sizes for you, so it's not even something that you have to be concerned with. Here's an example of our uh, heat diffusion st uh, stencil, which is a slightly more complicated version the, of the, the stencil code that we saw earlier in the talk over here on the left. In fact, we have to infer nearest neighbor's communication uh, using those, uh, those partitions that we saw earlier. Uh, what you see is we're getting nearly perfect weak scaling uh, with, with WeGate NumPy. Uh, but you'll notice there's no DAS lines on this, on this slide. And the reason for that is, is that some of these, advanced, or some of these indexing uh, operations are not supported by DAS. Uh, and so, you know, effectively, we can't have lines for, for those. Uh, you'll get an error saying that your code, you know, isn't supported. Uh, but in Legate NumPy, we support all those. We support all of your, all, all possible indexing schemes, uh, and you'll always be able to run your code uh, at scale with Legate NumPy. Uh, and finally, you know, here's a preconditioned CG solver. I like this one because preconditioned CG solvers are usually really, really nasty to write uh, in MPI and CUDA, and here it fits on a slide. Uh, and we're actually getting pretty decent weak scaling, uh, especially with our CPUs. Our GPUs still have some, some room for improvement, but they're still doing really great uh, and still continuing to scale as we scale up to 256 GPUs. So to wrap up, I want to talk a little bit briefly about you know, Le the Legate and Legion architecture and where it's going uh, in the future. Um, so you know, we have Legate NumPy today. It's being developed by NVIDIA. Uh, but we're looking at building new libraries on top of this Legate core uh, to support you know, uh, others, other NumPy uh, libraries on top of Legion. In particular, you know, there's been this very popular library called Fluxflow uh, for doing distributed uh, model parallel training on hundreds of GPUs that's being used at Stanford and Facebook and Los Alamos. Uh, and they're actually in the process of building Keras bindings for those uh, today. So you can have sort of a drop-in replacement for Keras for doing, uh, you know, distributed uh, deep learning training on top of on top of Legion. Uh, in video, we're also looking at, you know, building future Legate libraries uh, for things like Pandas and DAS. So if you have thoughts on what those libraries should be or, you know, you want to uh, voice your support for those. Uh, I'll provide a link for reaching out to us to tell us what you think that should be the next Legate libraries we work on. Um, and lastly, I want to point out, you know, this Legate core library that exists underneath of all these things, which we're, we also distribute now today. 
Um, this effectively provides a common data model uh, for all these NumPy, op, uh, NumPy or all these different Python libraries that we're building on top of Legion. You can think of this interface, we're providing this common data model interface. It's really similar to, in spirit, to the Arrow uh, interface for handling you know, shared memory where you can pass operations or pass data between uh, Python libraries uh, without having to copy it. But instead of working on just shared memory, you know, our, our Legion core library allows you to do this on distributed memory machines. And effectively, talk, it leverages Legion support for multiple partitions and coherence of that data to allow you to sort of pass uh, uh, logical regions with different partitions between different libraries and allow uh, there's different libraries to interoperate uh, their data types. So, for example, we should be able to pass NumPy arrays into some of this Keras work, or we get Keras tensors out uh, of the Fluxflow uh, library and pass those into legate NumPy and not have to incur any copying of data in distributed systems. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, that, that API is still under development. You can see an early version of that uh, in the legate core library, uh, but it's still open for development and open to changes. So, you know, if you have thoughts on what that API should look like, or you'd be interested in learning more or working with us on that, we'd be happy to, to talk with you uh, in more detail. So I'm happy to take any questions in the question and answer section now. Uh, I'll say that VA Core and VA NumPy are available as early access uh, research prototypes. Uh, you can download those at developer.nvidia.com slash legate. Unfortunately, they're not open source yet. Uh, they have a very permissive license that allows you to, to, do, to modify them, do whatever you want with them. Pretty much the only thing you can't do is redistribute them. Uh, I'm working to get them uh, uh, open sourced, uh, but effectively, I, as a researcher, I have, I have minimal power over that. Uh, and so the best way to, to sort of, you know, maybe encourage open sourcing uh, Legate is actually to email legate at nvidia.com and say, you know, that you'd like to see it be open sourced. Uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, if you have thoughts about what other Legate libraries we should be working on, uh, please email legate uh, at nvidia.com uh, and, and reach out to us and let us know. Uh, and I'll also say, you know, other software mentioned in this talk, uh, the Legion, Legion Runtime is available. Uh, it's always been open source. Uh, it's available on GitLab. Uh, you can get documentation for it at legion.stanford.edu. And I also mentioned Flexflow, which is also open source and available on GitHub. And you can see the, the Keras bindings that are being developed for Flexflow uh, are there as well. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to take any questions and please reach out and test out Legion NumPy and tell us what you think. Uh, we're, we're always looking for, for new users and, and new developers uh, for building other libraries on top of, of, of Legion and Legion. Uh, thank you for your attention.